Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, two and a half years ago, a pensioner walked into a police station and handed in a piece of paper. It revealed a horrific secret he'd kept hidden for most of his life, a litany of sexual abuse he'd suffered at a private school in Devon in the 1950s and 60s. His abuser went on to have a successful career as a children's TV presenter and author. But now the truth has finally emerged. Our Home Affairs correspondent, Andy Davis, is in Exeter. Andy. Well, there have been many cases highlighted recently of historical child abuse, many involving boarding schools, which, of course, is one of the strands in the ongoing independent inquiry into child sex abuse. But few of those cases stretch back as far in time as this one. Because tomorrow, here, John Earl, who's 87, will be sentenced for a series of assaults on a boy he taught nearly 60 years ago. And in the intervening decades, that boy never uttered a word about it until very recently to the police. He's now in his 60s and tonight, for the first time ever, he's decided to waive his right to anonymity, to reveal what happened and to tell me the story that for so long he was terrified anyone would discover. It is a remarkably candid account and contains some very distressing details. I'm a rock climber and a mountaineer, and so I'm a risk taker. And this is probably the riskiest thing I've ever done in my life, is to let this out. His name is Ian Peters. He's nearly 70, and tonight he's decided it's time to go public on a story which, until recently, he'd kept secret for more than half a century. A story which begins in another era, of him as a young, carefree boy growing up in Kenya, then dispatched to a boarding school in Devon called Upcut House. And my first impression of the school was never really seen anything like it, a sort of big Edwardian mansion, I suppose. There was a big tree outside. And uh, in Africa, I climbed every tree that I could find. You know, that's what I did, I climbed trees. And I climbed this tree. The first thing that really happened to me was I was called down from the tree, taken to the, <coughs> excuse me, taken to the headmaster's office and beaten. And it was, phew, uh, it had a huge effect. At the school was a geography teacher called John Earl, 28 years old, the headmaster's son, and viewed with fear, says Ian. The man who one night, we're learning only now, would embark upon a series of sexual assaults on Ian, then just nine. After the lights went out, there was, there was no warning. I was lying half asleep in bed. I felt strong arms lifting me out of my bed and carrying me and down a corridor into a, into a brightly lit room. There was a gas fire burning, we had a bed, there were pictures on the walls. And then the abuse began. The abuse became routine, spanning four years. The assaults happening in Earl's bedroom at the school and on Earl's private boat in Dartmouth. Nine-year-olds in those days, we didn't, we didn't have any idea of sex, you know, it wasn't on, on the television, it, we never talked about it, we had no idea of our own sexuality as kids. He can remember after that first term how his sister, reunited with him, reacted upon seeing him. She said, she remembers me as uh, this little wild boy running around in, in, in the African bush, and when she came back, she was amazed. At the change? Yeah. How do you think you changed, Ian? I was pale.
inhibited, introverted. I'm a natural extrovert. <laughs> And suddenly I was a stranger with my own family. And in many ways, you adapt to that sense of not belonging. The system fails you, individuals fail you, and you, you lose that essential trust that you have with, with your fellow human beings. It would take Ian 58 years to report John Earl to the police, and even longer to reveal it publicly as he does so tonight. Earl is now 87, in terms of historical abuse cases, it's among the oldest ever to have been prosecuted. Two men finally confronting the ghosts of their past in a case which tells you so much about the complexities of abuse and its aftermath. Yeah, my name is John Earl. I'm uh, one of the ancient brigade of early film uh, cameramen and directors for the BBC. Uh, this is John Earl 10 years ago, being interviewed about his past as a filmmaker signing one of his books. So I've been doing nothing but sign copies of my book. Genial reflections on a fortunate life. John Earl went on to become a children's TV presenter here in the popular BBC science programme Tom Tom, showcasing the work of a Cornish lifeboat crew. This is the navigation and radio centre and where the crew rest on the voyage out to a wreck. And over here is the top he presented the another program called the Rock Face. He also presented several episodes of the BBC's Jack and Ori. It's been a rich and varied career. And this really leads us into the next program. But for the boy he'd abused repeatedly over four years, it was a very different story. Forester, nightclub worker, professional climber, drifting from job to job. As much drawn to the risks he could take in climbing, as repelled by paranoid notions that he too might abuse if placed in a position of power, and always hiding the truth. I think this is probably runs right through all abuse victims, is this sense of shame and guilt that somehow or another you are responsible for it. You know, even with John Earl, who's, who's let's face it, is now being convicted. And everybody tells me, you know, what he did was wrong, and it's, it's unforgivable. But I, I've spent 50 years of my life at some level believing that I was also played a part in that process. You know, and that's a, that's a terrible secret to have to live with. Terrible. To this day, he's never told his parents about the abuse at Upcott House, long since closed down as a school and now a B&B. &B. What prompted him to finally come forward? his late wife's terminal illness at a time when the true scale of historical child abuse was emerging. There were issues to confront, finally. Ian wrote down what had happened to him on a sheet of A4. What was it like, that moment, that you walked into a police station, finally, oh, after all those years, and handed in <sighs> that statement? statement? Yeah, that was extraordinary, because on the one level it was very banal. It was, I thought it was, you know, almost something that I had to write down and so I wrote it down and I carried it with me and then I went into Exeter and going going shopping and the supermarket I chose to go to uh, I had to get to it I had to go past the police station and I thought well I used an expletive I thought it I'm going to do it what was it like having a police officer, someone in authority, yeah. listen to you and believe you? Extraordinary. On the strength of Ian's testimony, the police pursued Earl. A month ago, after a lengthy investigation, he pleaded guilty to six counts of indecently assaulting Ian between 1957 and 1961. We tried to speak to him afterwards, 
but the former TV man was now distinctly camera shy. Do you have anything to say to your victim, Mr Earl? Mr Earl, do you have anything to say to your victim? Are others going to come forward, Mr Earl? What are your feelings towards John Earl now? Well, I hadn't seen him until until the press photography. I hadn't seen him for 30, nearly 40 years. And what I saw there was um, a disempowered old man. You didn't go to court? I hadn't been to court. Um, Did you consider going to court I, to face him? To be frank, at one stage I considered killing John L that the only way to release myself from, from that emotional hold he had over my life was to actually kill him. Mr. Earl, do you have anything to say about this case? Mr. Earl, did you sexually abuse other children? No. See you later, do you have, do you, See you later mate. Do you have anything See to say, See you later. Mr. Earl, about See this you later. case? For a long time, Ian was preparing to face Earl in court at a trial until news came through of the guilty plea. I, I saw this thing. It was, a, it was an email from my, my copper, as I call him. It said, guilty plea offered. And I've never felt such a, a wave of joy and emotion, you know, that suddenly every, everything over the last 50 or 60 years f falls into place. And you realise, yeah, yeah, well, not quite the end of the road because I'm still talking to you, but, you know, that was a final vindication for me that, you know, what I had done was, was the right thing to have done, yeah. Ian, who's had extensive counselling, is in a new relationship now. The natural-born rebel, as he calls himself, has nothing but praise for the police investigation. He's waiving his right to anonymity tonight, he says, to keep the issue of child safeguarding high on the agenda and to give others like him confidence that there's help out there. If I wanted any message to, to, to go out would be, it is hell. There's no way that rape or abuse or violence of that nature can be anything except hellish. But there can be healing and you can survive it. Looking forward now, what do you want for, for yourself? I think I found it. <laughs> you know, I've got a loving family. I, I'm in a loving relationship. You know, I love being a granddad. Just an ordinary granddad is, is <laughs> fantastic. So, yeah, um, I mean, life, life is extremely good. And life for Ian now, filmed here climbing with his son, means contemplating new adventures. Happy days, eh? Happy yeah. days. Yeah, Happy days. <laughs> While tomorrow, as John Earl gets sentenced, comes a moment of reckoning, finally, for what happened to that nine-year-old boy who liked to climb trees. Well, there were so many other fascinating aspects of that interview which we didn't have time to include. I was particularly struck, for instance, by what he had to say about power, about how a legacy of abuse had left him with this fear of ambition, that to be ambitious would mean, in his case, to be powerful, and to be powerful there was always the potential he feared that he might go on to be dominant or to abuse the very thing he feared the most. And it's that notion of the use and abuse of power which is so central to the ongoing inquiry into child abuse, an inquiry, incidentally, which Ian Peters has told me he would now be willing to cooperate with. So tomorrow, John Earl here will be sentenced, finally. But I'm afraid we are left with one particular question hanging in the air. Were there other children that John Earl abused who are still out there, 60 years on, still carrying that terrible secret? Back to you in London. Andy Davis in Exeter. And if you've been affected by any of the issues raised in that report, you can find information about support organisations online at channel4.com forward slash support.
Now, a former children's television presenter has been sentenced to four years in jail for a series of sexual assaults on a young boy dating back 60 years. John Earl was deputy head of a school in Oakhampton in Devon when he carried out the assaults on Ian Peters, who was just nine years old at the time. A court heard Mr Peters had suffered a lifetime of fear, shame and insecurity. And tonight, he claims he was not the only victim. A warning, there are distressing details in this report by our Home Affairs correspondent, Andy Davis. John Earl, driven into court this morning, moments from being jailed for a series of sexual assaults on a boy called Ian Peters, nearly 60 years ago. A historical abuse prosecution among the oldest ever to have been brought. Mr Earl, do you have anything to say to Ian Peters, who you abused when he was nine years old? Is there anything you have he's to not, say now, Mr not, he's, Earl? He's not going to be making any comment. Silence. Such a potent theme in this extraordinary story. Because last night on Channel 4 News, that nine-year-old schoolboy whom Earl abused all those years ago broke six decades of public silence to tell his story. A story of his ordeal in a Devon boarding school at the hands of his then-teacher, John Earl. I was lying half asleep in bed. I felt strong arms lifting me out of my bed and carrying me and down a corridor into a, into a brightly lit room. And then the abuse began. The sexual assaults on Ian spanned four years at Upcut House School, long since closed down. The impact on Ian, so profound, so debilitating, it would take him 58 years before he felt strong enough to disclose it to the police. We heard from John Earl's barrister today. He painted a picture of a man full of remorse and he appealed to the judge to consider a suspended sentence. Earl, he said, was an old, ill man, diminished through this prosecution and punished already by the process. The judge said it was clear from supporting letters that John Earl had seemingly lived a blameless life after Upcut House. He also acknowledged that he had care needs now. It is appropriate in the case of any defendant aged 87 years and in ill health to take these matters into account but that must be balanced by the fact that whilst you have enjoyed many years of productive and happy life with your family and friends, your victim has not been so lucky. It was a gross breach of trust, said the judge, sentencing Earl to four years imprisonment. John Earl went from teaching to presenting children's TV programmes, later running an Outward Bound centre. He'd had contact with many children, said his lawyer, but described his abuse of Ian Peters as a complete aberration and not repeated. But not so, says Ian Peters, alleging on Channel 4 News tonight that there was at least another victim, a school friend. I actually witnessed him being abused. And I can remember him just in the same way as I described earlier, being picked up and carried into another room where the abuse took place. I can remember my friend, him coming and choosing my friend and, and taking him off and the feeling of relief that it wasn't me. Ian Peters claims he witnessed the actual abuse on another occasion. It's understood that friend died a number of years ago. Devon and Cornwall Police of tonight told Channel 4 News they believe there may be other victims of John Earl, and earlier they issued this appeal. Should there be others who have been affected by this case, then I encourage them to come forward to report this to the police. Welcoming today's sentence, Ian Peters told Channel 4 News that this investigation had opened a door to support and healing that had remained close to him for so many years. I've been getting away with it.